Part 2 of this series on the Mbashi River Pass covers the final part of the descent, the crossing of the Fife King Bridge and the southern ascent. If you intend driving this pass, we recommend that you watch Part 1 first, which contains the overview animations as well as other important information pertaining to safety, history and tourism. The Koza people are partial descendants of the Ikam hunter-gatherers, Khoi pastoralists as well as partial descendants of the ancestors of Ngunis, who in ancient times migrated from North Africa to Africa's Great Lakes region, eventually settling in Southern Africa. Koza oral history also mentions a historical settlement called Elushlangeni, believed to have been in East Africa, in which the Ngunis lived for some time before continuing with their migration southwards. Upon crossing the mountains and rivers in South Africa, these farm-working agro-pastoralists brought their cattle and goats with them and absorbed the weaker sand groups in the region. They also brought weapons, notably their assegais and their shields, and would form groups of chiefdoms and kingdoms, mainly in what is now the Eastern Cape. According to oral tradition, the modern Koza kingdom was founded somewhere before the 15th century by Chawe, whom the royal clan of the Kozas is named after, who overthrew his brother Kira with the help of the Ama Nguevu clan of the Mpondemisa state. Chawe and his army then incorporated formerly independent Nguni clans into the Koza kingdom. Also, Khoikhoi tribes were incorporated. These include the Inkwa, the Kikwa and the Ama Nguasini both Khoi and Sutu origin. Khoza identity then became political rather than narrow ethnic and anyone who accepted the House of Chawi as rulers became Khoza. Traditional healers of South Africa include diviners. This job is mostly taken by women who spend five years in apprenticeship. There are also herbalists, prophets and healers for the communities. The Koza have a strong oral tradition with many stories of ancestral heroes. According to tradition, the leader from whose name the Koza people take their name was the first king of the nation. This concrete bridge was built to replace the original Five King Bridge, which was sited a few hundred meters upstream and which was substantially destroyed during the flooding experienced in May 1959. The original bridge was opened on the 2nd of July 1937. It was a 12-span slab-type reinforced concrete bridge with a clear waterway extending over 80 meters and with a height above the water level of approximately 7 meters. The total length, including the approaches, was about 122 meters. Construction commenced in August 1936 and was completed in January 1937 at a cost of 3,500 pounds. The bridge was named after Robert Fife King, who was Chief Magistrate of the Transkyan Territories at the time. The name Fife King often appears on maps incorrectly as the Five Kings Bridge. Robert Fife King was enormously respected by the local people, which was evidenced by a mass turnout of Koza at his funeral. The ascent up the southern side of the pass is not quite as long or steep as the northern side, but offers much more impressive scenery. This climb also contains four of the more extreme bends on the entire pass and bisects the villages of Kwakasu and Shukuma. The Kozas have a strong oral tradition with many stories of ancestral heroes. According to the tradition, the leader from whose name the Koza people take their name was the first king of the nation. Kharabi was a great warrior and a man of great ability who was much loved by his father. His brother, Kaleka, was a meek and listless man who did not possess all the qualities befitting of a future king. Matters were also complicated by Kaleka's initiation as a diviner, which was a forbidden practice for members of the royal family. Seeing the popularity of his brother and fearing that he might one day challenge him for the throne, Kaleka attempted to usurp the throne from his father, but Kharabi would come to his father's aid and quell the insurrection. With the blessing of his father who provided him with retinue and also accompanied him, Khadebi would leave the great place and settle in the Amatole Mountains region. There he destroyed the weaker Khoikhoi tribes and killed Insati of the Khoikhoi and bought the land. He would then rule over the various Koza clans there and the right-hand house of the Koza kingdom was founded. The key figure in the Koza oral tradition is the Mbongi or prey singer. They live close to the chief's great place and they accompany the chief on important occasions. Mbongi's poetry, which is called Imibongo, praises the actions and adventures of chiefs and ancestors.
The supreme being is called Uklamata. In Gaza tradition, their ancestors act as intermediaries between the living and God, and they are honored in rituals in order to bring good fortune. Dreams play an important role in contact with the ancestors. Traditional religious practice features rituals, initiations, and feasts. Modern rituals typically pertain to matters of illness and psychological well-being. Christian missionaries established outposts amongst the Khoza in the 1820s, and the first Bible translation was in the mid-1850s, partially done by Henry Dugmore. Khoza did not convert in great numbers until the 20th century, but now many are Christian, particularly within the African-initiated churches, such as the Zion Christian Church. Some denominations combine Christianity with traditional beliefs. Each person within the Khoza culture has their place which is recognized by the entire community. Starting from birth, a Khoza person goes through graduation stages which recognize their growth and assign them a recognized place in the community. Each stage is marked by a specific ritual aimed at introducing the individual to their counterparts and also to their ancestors. Starting from Imbeleku, a ritual performed to introduce a newborn to the ancestors, to Umpumo, the homecoming, from Inkwenkwe, a boy, to Indoda, a man. These rituals and ceremonies are sacrosanct to the identity and heritage of the Tosa and other African descendants. Though some Western scholars question the relevance of these practices today, even urbanized Tosa people do still follow them. The Ulwaluku and Intonjani are also traditions which separated this tribe from the rest of the Nguni tribes. These are performed to mark the transition from child to adulthood. Zulus once performed the ritual, but King Shaka stopped it because of the war in the 1810s. In 2009, it was reintroduced by King Goodwill's Relatini Zulu, not as a custom, but as a medical procedure to curb HIV infections. After ritual circumcision, the initiates known as Abakwata live in isolation for up to several weeks, often alone in the mountains. During the process of healing, they smear white clay on their bodies and observe numerous customs. In modern times, the practice has caused some controversy with over 825 circumcision and initiation related deaths since 1994. Other rites include the seclusion of mothers for 10 days after giving birth and the burial of the afterbirth and umbilical cord near the village. This is reflected in the traditional greeting Inkaba Yako Ipi literally, where is your navel? The answer, tell someone where you live, what your clan affiliation is, and what your social status is, and contains a wealth of undisclosed cultural information. Most importantly, it determines where they belong. Koza marriage, known as Umdshato, is one that is filled with a number of customs and rituals which relate to the upkeep of Koza traditional practices. These rituals have been practiced for decades by the Khoza people and have been incorporated into modern-day Khoza marriages as well. The purpose of the practices is to bring together two different families and to give guidance to the newlywed couple throughout. To start off the procedure, the male intending to marry goes through Uko Twalwa, which entails him choosing his future bride and making his intentions of marriage known. However, this practice was not done by all the tribes within the Khoza people. In modern times, the man and woman would most likely have been in courtship or a relationship prior to Ukutalwa. Decades before this, it would entail legal bridal abduction, where the man would choose a woman of his liking to be his bride and go into negotiations with the family of the bride without her knowledge or consent. She would have to abide to the marriage as per tradition. Following Ukutwala, the man will then be in discussion with his parents or relatives to inform them of his choice in bride. During this discussion, the clan name, Isiduko, of the woman would be revealed and researched. If it were found that the woman and the man share the same clan name, they would not be allowed to proceed with the marriage, as it is said that people with the same clan name are of the same relation and therefore cannot be wed. The Khoza people settled on mountain slopes of the Amatola and the Winterberg mountain ranges. Many streams drain into great rivers of this Khoza territory, including the Kai and Fish rivers. Rich soils and plentiful rainfall make the river basins good for farming and grazing, making cattle important and the basis of wealth. When you see the tall communications tower on the left, you know you're very close to the end of the pass. 
The pass ends at a prominent fork at the 14 kilometer point.